I always catch them shitting. I don't know why it happens. Well, thank goodness the um, I have to. I've got space to go back. I'm at two. <laughs> I'm at two hundred and six hundred. Wow. Obviously a nicely fed robin. Must know the locals. A big bird, aren't they? Yeah. Right guys, so with video on the A1 and my 200-600, I quite often shoot uh, 4K 120 uh, and also um, HD 240 frames per second as well. So it gives me some nice slow motion. And as you can see here, um, this is normal speed. But when I slow it down a bit, you'll see how much smoother and a little bit less erratic it becomes. Also, you can see things for a little bit longer and it allows you to appreciate the wildlife and things like that and also you know when they're flapping their wings and uh, things like that it looks a bit more graceful so swans and their babies the cygnets there um work really nicely shooting through the grass and there you go this is slowed down four times so you can see a little bit of stuff going on um, a little bit longer and you can actually appreciate what's actually happening and uh just adds a bit more cuteness to them as well just because you can kind of see what it's up to it's got a bit of uh, grass or something in the uh, in its mouth there that's stuck um, either that or a bit of fishing line actually check that out you see that unless it's a spider web hopefully it's just a spider web I think it was much finer than the fishing wire um, but anyway, hopefully that's uh, it was fine after a while anyway, so I don't think it was anything serious. But do you see what I saw there? Um, I presume it was spiderweb where he's pulled it out. Hopefully he's okay. Um, there you go. We've got it, got it loose anyway. Um, but as you can see there, looking proper cute, focusing, working well. Um, swans flying away. So I'm still shooting in manual, and it's very difficult actually with the exposure because the sun kept coming through the clouds in and out in and out when you've got a white swan um the exposure is completely and utterly thrown out really because you've got dark background and a light swan basically um as you can see the exposure is pretty good but you'll see later on that it's extremely difficult when i'm shooting straight into the sun pretty much uh and it's very difficult to get them um their exposure correct um but it's not too bad but it's just they're a bit whiter than they really are if you know what i mean you know he buggers off and uh don't know where he went but um yeah anyway the 4k 120 and you can see the autofocus is working wicked staying on stuff um working really nicely and there's i don't know what this is called some kind of turn i think maybe a black headed turn because it had a black head um and a big gull um on the uh roost there and he keeps coming in i've slowed this down four times again so you can kind of see what's going on and it's quite cool even though they're a good couple of hundred meters away and it just shows you that you know it's actually really handy to be able to shoot at high speed you can see what's going on because that's happening so so quickly um in fact if i speed it back up we can now see how quickly it's coming in and out and you can't really focus and see what's actually happening but four times slower or eight times slower depending on what settings i'm at um really allows me to see what's going on when he's buzzing i mean the speed it's going at um, geese taking off um, things everything seems to happen at once so you end up with you know you're focusing on that goose for example taking off and then something else happens in the distance or behind you or something like that you don't really know what to do you just got to concentrate on one thing but it's easier said than done but anyway there you go so four times slow it just looks really graceful and uh, also takes away my slight movement on the um, handheld because I'm hand holding the lens the up and down movement of me um, even though the stabilisation is working um, you can see that I'm moving around quite a bit because it's quite difficult to hold, hand hold a big lens um, especially at I have it in crop mode as well so it's um, auto cropping in slightly to give me a little bit of range and this is the hobby so if you watch Camilla and I with Mark um, he knows about these these are a bit like a swallow type bird very very quick um, as you can see there it was at full speed now it's in slow um, slowed down four times it's a bit more manageable um, but again the a1 and the 200 600 working really nicely together 
Um, no real dramas whatsoever since the um, upgrading definitely improved it um, over the long run. Right, here come the swans. So them coming in and uh, slowed it down. And it just looks super graceful. But now I had an issue. I had four swans. It's like, right, which one do I pick? Because I didn't really know where they were going to go. Luckily, they came towards us. Um, this is one of the shots I've always really wanted to capture. And um, it was like, right, which swan do I go for? Do I go for the one on the right? Because he's heading a bit more. No, actually, the one in the, in the on the left is more straight ahead of me. So I stayed on him. Um, and then it all sort of happened. I wish I'd moved right slightly, but it's all happening so quickly that... Um, it's sort of one of those moments of like oh dear um, also not particularly level so the water in the background is slightly pissed but as you can see there the exposure is a little bit interesting because um, they're super white they're like the sunlight's reflecting off them um, so it's quite a difficult one to uh, get perfect but not, not too bad um, and it's all about capturing it at the end of those isn't it as you can see there um, I've actually got I forgot I actually had the stabilization in mode number two instead of one one for from sort of video and moving around more normally when you have it on two it's more erratic for fast moving birds um this is normal speed so this is 4k 120 but um just at normal speed this is 240 frames a second in hd uh, now we've uh, swapped over and um it just looks cool <laughs> just looks really cool um, allows me to just see things a bit more in you know a bit better and a bit more slowly especially the water droplets and stuff falling off just look awesome um, he was quite cool he was quite close to us so we could actually get some quite good uh, video there and uh, I just love the the water droplets dripping I wish really wish um, Sony would bring in a thousand frame per second um, camera of some sort um, the RX10 Mark IV, which I've used for years um, now, has a thousand frames per second in HFR mode, but the quality isn't great. 500 frames per second is pretty good, um, but it's still not real HD. It'd be nice to be able to have um, 4K 1000 or 4K HD with autofocus. Um, I don't know if that's even possible, but 40 times slower than real time is a really cool thing to be able to do. Um, even if it's in the HFR mode, which gives you up to seven seconds worth of time, um, because that suddenly equates to quite a long period of time. If you think about seven times 40, um, 280 seconds, is that right? Uh, whatever, how many minutes that works out to be. So, yeah, you can see there, it just looks really graceful, looks really interesting. You can actually see what's happening, um, you know, and it just looks awesome. You can't really appreciate it when it's in normal um normal speed it happens so quickly even that where he's dunking his head back in and he's back in again um looking around and whatever just the sunlight glinting the water dropping it's just really really cool um it just yeah it's just beautiful in nature especially um slow motion stuff is is wicked to be able to capture and uh especially water and things like that where you get reflections happening and it just works um really nicely and um yeah, sort of. Uh, I don't. I just love the slow motion stuff. So I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments below if you're into that sort of thing, um, or if it's something you'd like to get into. Because it's um, once you discover it and you start using it quite a bit. So uh, yeah, 4K 120 is fantastic because you've got four times slow motion, and um, the 240 frames per second as well. Um, there's a damselfly just took off on that bit of blade of grass there, which is quite cool. Right onto the photo. So I've put the settings on the left hand side. They're all taken on the 600 mil. Um, 200 or 600 from Sony or the F4 um, 600mm Prime so you'll see that if it goes down to F4 it means it's on that but as you can see just, just to give you an idea of the settings that I used when we first arrived you can see the sky is horrendous I haven't edited it, edited it. I just thought I could put a fake sky in but I'm not going to I'm just going to leave it as real it was literally a white boring cloudy cloudy sort of sky it was just no sunshine as you can see the light's not brilliant um, and my highest my ISOs are getting higher um, as I start to do things um, it started off at around about 320 ish to 500 and then we were soon up to 1600 plus with yeah, two and a half thousand there to get the hobby so apparently it's a hobby that's as close as I could get to it 
um, and they move like lightning. They literally buzz around all over the place. So again, you have to work really hard to be able to capture it. Shooting with zone autofocus or actually fully wide. Um, here are the swans and their um, signets, or swan and signets. Um, as you can see there, um, I had been shooting uh, up in the sky and then I aimed down and just shot some of the uh, uh, swans there. Um, again here with the um, 200-600, it takes really good shots. Really, really pleased with that lens, um, especially in this sort of situation. Where, and with the A1's firmware update now, it's 100% shots. This is onto the, F, the um, 600 F4, as you can see here. Massive crop in though. And you can see a bee that um, is just below the uh, bird there. Um, so huge crop in. So you can see a little bit of pixelation going on. But um, you know, I'm not going to show you the whole shot because it's quite wide and it's quite a long way away. But um, yeah, I've cropped in probably two thirds, something like that. Um, but it works. And that lens is awesome. Um, but £12,000, I don't have to buy one. And to be honest, as I've said in the other video, I don't think... I'd ever make the most of it because it's a kind of you are going out for that purpose kind of lens where the 200 600 allows you to do so many different uh, things as well with a lot smaller a lot less money um, again so there we go so keeping the settings roughly what they were um, because there was lots going on the light wasn't really changing uh, much either it did later on as the sun started to come through um, and it turned into quite a nice day um, that was the turn thing um, I managed to get but one eight thousandth um, of a second there just to stop it really because it was so quick um, buzzing around um, one trying to attack that cr um, that other gull um, that's the cuckoo um, ISO 100 it, because it was one of the first shots we took and um, as you can see there it wasn't actually that far up. it was far away but the actual light and everything I had to come down on the shutter speed so quite a low shutter speed quite a low ISO um, this is quite amazing so two geese you're not thinking oh that's not amazing but this shows you the real world of the firmware update. So the A1 used to hit 80%, 90% um, shots. Um, <laughs> shooting through a, a massive bush. You can just about see there, it's still in focus. You're still holding onto it, which is absolutely ri ridiculous, really. Um, and even further, so if we go part, we keep going through the bushes, it's still holding onto them. Um, absolutely mad. Um, and just to put it in perspective, that's how far they were in that bush, and it's carried on, um, and they came out the other side, and it was they were still in focus. The shots weren't great, so I haven't bothered using them. But I just thought I'd show you um, duck coming in. This is me just messing around with the um, 600 f4. And unfortunately, I didn't have the whole day. I had to go to a family event um, afterwards, so it was fantastic to meet Mark, and he was very, very kind and allowed me to use the 600 f4. Um, here's a couple of shots from my family do as my uh, auntie and uncle's wedding anniversary uh, 40 years and um, their dogs were there so I snapped a few doggy shots um, for them using the 200 600 um, as you can see the the, um, the f-stops changed depending on what I was doing and um, they are cropped in a bit because you've got top and bottom um, for the video which is 16 by 9 which is the videos obviously different to the photos which are three by two which you can kind of see here so it's both shot there um fantastic day um very very um appreciative to meet mark and it, the fact he allowed me to use that lens and uh, we had a really good chat and i'm sure we're going to meet up again as well so that's the photos that's the videos um and i was greeted to this lovely sunset when i got home shame it was cloudy um but it was a lovely a lovely evening and after five and something hours worth of driving home that day it was um, nice to get home and um, you know get back to bed and uh, you know get ready for the next day which was back to work so anyway hope you had a good one and um, please click the subscribe button little notification bell as well and um, let me know below in comments if you've got any questions or any comments about the photos videos etc see you soon